They want everyone to stay mindful of God. He's still in control. This evening's scripture is going to come from Psalm 103, starting at the verse, first verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who have forgiven all thy inequities, who healeth all thy diseases. I have read to you Psalms 103, verse 1 through verse 4. May God have a blessing to the doers, hearers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious, merciful Father, we come to you on this evening, Father God, first of all, just to say thank you, Father God. Father God, you didn't have to do it, but you did it. You allowed us another chance to lift up your holy and precious name, Father God. And with that in mind, Father God, we say thank you, Father God. Father God, with, with this corona disease is going on, it's the talk of the town, Father God. But we know, Father God, you should be the talk of the town, Father God. Let us lift you up, the highest praise, Father God. We are not thinking about what the world is going through right now, Father God, because you made the world, Lord Jesus. Father God, we lift your holy name up. Father God, we lift your holy name up. Keeping the faith, keeping you in our heart, Father God. We are not worried about anything that's going to control my body, Father God. We are trying to get an understanding of you coming into our heart, Father God. Father God, we want you to be here, Father God, so we can go out in this world and show you, Father God. And if they see you, there will be no worry, Father God. Because your stripes, your beating, Father God, we are healed, Father God. And Father God, let us be mindful of that, Father God. Also, Father God, let us be mindful of our the less fortunate, Father God. There's homeless in this world, Father God. There's hungriness in this world, Father God. Father God, I could ask you to continue, lead, and guide us so we can be a blessing to each and every one that needs your blessing, Father God, that comes in contact with us, Father God. Father God, I ask you to continue to lift up my church family, Lord Jesus. Continue to bless us, Father God. Continue to let your name be in our mouth, Father God. Father God, I ask right now that you continue to lift up our pastor, Father God. Father God, give him the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding to push out to us so we can follow him, Father God. Give him what he needs, Father God, so he can give us what we need to keep us strong, Lord Jesus. Father God, I pray right now that you lift up his wife. Father God, continue to bless them both. Continue to bless this whole family, Father God. And Father God, I ask that you bless the absent part of the church family on this evening. Bless the ones that wanted to be here that couldn't, Father God. Let a word be said on this evening, Lord Jesus, that someone could use. And Father God, I know one day my days down here are going to come to an end. I won't be able to pray anymore, Father God. I won't be able to call out your holy name. But I ask, Father God, if it's in your will to give me a place, Father God, in the millions of mansions that you have, Father God. Father God, keep me strong. Keep me strong, Father God. Father God, I offer up this prayer in your son Jesus of Christ's name. And all the saints say amen. Amen. amen and amen. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus in my heart. Glad I got a friend down in my heart. Glad I got a friend down in my heart. So glad
Man, I got a friend down in my heart. Oh, man, I got Jesus in my heart. Glad I got peace down in my heart. Glad I got peace. Glad I got peace down in my heart. So glad, glad I got peace. In my heart, glad I got joy down in my heart. Glad I got joy down in my heart. Glad I got joy down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus in my heart. Well, I got Jesus. 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 You got a mighty good friend. If you got Jesus. You got a lawyer in the courtroom. Oh well, if you got Jesus. You ought to show some sign. If you got Jesus. I want to ask you one question. I got Jesus. Have you been to the hospital? I got Jesus. There's somebody there. I got Jesus. That's rocking with pain. I got Jesus. Uh, one touch from you, hey. Lord. I got Jesus. We'll make it all right. I got Jesus. Now, if you got Jesus. I got Jesus. Do you love your enemy? I got Jesus. Uh, since you got Jesus. I got Jesus. Uh, do you love your friend? I got Jesus. If you got Jesus. You ought to clap your hands. Give God the praise. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. Glad I got him. Glad I got Jesus down in. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus in my heart. One more time. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. If you got Jesus, do you love your enemy? Or do you love your friend? How about you? Do you have Jesus? Let me tell you. I got Jesus. 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 Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus in my heart. Glad I got Jesus in my heart. of Jesus. We welcome each of you here, wherever you're watching, to Appalachia Shoals Missionary Baptist Church Worship Experience. We can be found at 553 Towners Bridge Circle in Bethlehem, Georgia, where Thomas Shannon serves as our pastor. We have Sunday school every Sunday at 9 o'clock, worship experience at 10 o'clock, and midweek Bible study every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. You're welcome anytime the Spirit leads you this way. All members and friends, be mindful that all activities have been ca canceled. And to further notice, please check updates on our Facebook page and our website at www.appalachishows.org. Remember, on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, we have virtual Bible study. Call into the conference call. Information can be found from a member or on our Facebook page. 
Pastor Shannon asked that we all remember to check on our elderly members that may need help at this particular time. And also, if you need prayer or need to reach out to our pastor, please reach out to him. His information can be found in the bulletin. He loves to hear from you. As we continue in our service, the Bible tells us that men ought to always pray, that we ought to pray without ceasing. We're going to take a moment during this worship experience, and we're going to go to the throne of grace. We're going to take a moment to go and pray to God. And as we prepare to go into prayer, we ask that you prepare your hearts and put your hearts and your minds on Jesus. Even in these troublous times and these unknown times, we're safe in the arms of Jesus. The choir just reminded us that there's safety in his arms. And as we begin to go into prayer, put your mind on that safe place. The Bible tells us that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide in his safety. May we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. God, we thank you for this moment, God. We thank you for the opportunity to come to you in prayer, regardless of where we're watching, whatever we're doing, God. We stop and we say thank you, God. Although every day and every moment is uncertain, God, but we know that you Never change, God. The Bible tells us that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, God. The Bible tells us that you are my rock and my shield, God. And we come to you, God, and we dwell in your secret place, God. We thank you for being our hiding place, God, that nothing shall prosper against us, Father God, because we know that you are right there, God. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you for being our hiding place. When we didn't deserve one, God, we thank you for being our secret place. Thank you for being our dwelling place. Thank you for being Jehovah Rapha. Thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, God. Thank you for being what we didn't know that we needed at this time, God. We pray that you bless every ear that hears this prayer, God. We pray that you bless every household that hears this prayer, God. We pray that you bless every member of Appalachia Shoals Missionary Baptist Church. We may be far apart, God, but the body, the church is a body of baptized believers. And at this moment, God, we just say thank you for allowing us to be a part of the body of baptized believers, God, that we can shed our light and show our light to men, women, boys, and girls that Jesus lives, God, that there is a Savior. That instead of worry and panic, God, that we call upon your name, God, and we thank you for that, God. We pray that you give us the things that we don't know that we need, God. Continue to watch over us and be with us and guide us, God. And we pray that this worship experience, God, will be pleasing into their sight. We pray for the one that's going to bring the word, God. Bless him. Give us with clarity and allow our hearts to hear your word. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen.
Psalms 24, beginning at verse 1, and it reads, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul into vanity or sworn deceitfully. Verse 7, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift up your everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. How many of you know that better days are coming? With everything that's going on in the world, still trust in God and believe in God that better days are coming. Sometimes it feels cold and you feel so alone. But hold on. Better days are coming. Cause they can get up in this world. I know it ain't easy, but hang on in there. Cause better days are coming. Better days, better days, better days for your mother and your father. And I know, oh, I know it ain't easy, but it ain't going in there for better days, better days are coming. Better days, better days. Yeah. yeah. 
days are coming amen it may not look like that today but I come to tell somebody that better days are coming amen and I want to thank God for this opportunity to stand before you and to be able to understand that sometimes we have to do what we have to do amen we know that first and foremost we serve a God that cannot and will not fail can I get an amen First of all, giving glory and praises to a God that cannot and will not fail. And all we need to do is just to hold on for better days. Amen. To my minister, Minister Ava, thank you for joining us. Also to the choir, we thank God for the praise and worship team. What a mighty job you all did. Amen. And then, of course, to our musician and then, of course, to our deacons. And then to our Facebook family, our social media family, we just want to be able to say to you that better days are coming. I know some of you all are stuck in the house, but we said that we were going to go on and do what God is calling us to do. And that is to make sure that the gospel goes forth. Amen. So I just want to give you some information just before we get started. Uh, we are going to carry out our mission, and that is to go there for it and to teach all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we here at Appalachia Shoals Missionary Baptist Church find ourselves in this position to be able to be servants. Amen. And we are coming here to serve so that not only our members could take advantage of the word of God, but also those who will join us at a due time. Mm -hmm. So let us go to the word right away. Let us go to 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy. We will find ourselves in the first chapter and we will read from verse 1 through 7. Amen. That is 2 Timothy the first chapter, verses 1 through 7. For those of you who are at home, please follow us as we go into this word. Amen. First of all, I thank God for what he's done for me. And so I just want you to know that I am already on my praise bicycle because he has lifted me up and given me another day to praise him. Amen. And so, therefore, before the service is over, I might throw away my bicycle and grab the motorcycle. Amen. Because we are definitely going somewhere. Amen. So let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come to thank you, Father God, for this opportunity once again to stand at your sacred throne. And we pray, Father God, that, Lord, that you would be able to deliver to us, Father God, a rainbow word, Father God, so that your people, Father God, could be fed. Father God, under these strange times, Father God, we need you the most. And, Lord, because of that, we just come to you and ask, Lord, that, Lord, first of all, forgive us of our sins. And we are praying, Father God, that you would consecrate our minds, our hearts. And then, Father God, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross, Father God. The Lord, that I would decrease while you increase. Lord, Father God, we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus Christ, we pray and let everyone say amen. amen. Well, when you look at this text, it tells me that we have a lot of work to do. Amen. amen. So in 2 Timothy, and we find ourselves looking at the first chapter. And so for a topic today, I want to talk about stirred but not shaken. Right. Let me say this again, stirred but not shaken. Amen. And if I could give a subtitle, I would say that God has not given us the spirit of fear. It is wonderful to know that today we are looking at a letter written to Paul by Paul and his given to his protege, Timothy. Now, this letter is supposed to uh, be written from 
a familiar place to Paul. Paul finds himself in jail once again. And at this particular time, it's his final resting place. In other words, what I'm saying, Paul is in a dungeon, amen? And a dungeon is not like our today jails where you get three hots in a cot. This dungeon, my brothers and sisters, it was a hole in the wall, amen, where you had to be lifted down, amen, into the ground, amen. And then what I realized is that uh, they had nothing there to even go to the bathroom. In other words, what I'm saying it was horrendous conditions. And they had a hole where they would drop the food down. And, 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 and Paul lived like this at his final resting place. But one of the things that I love about uh, this, this text is just, just like this God forsaken place that Paul was in, we are also being held hostage by this vile and ugly virus called COVID-19 known to us as coronavirus. This is the most difficult time we are facing in our history of this nation. I believe that God has had enough and we are now facing what my spiritual father called a sin tag. In other words, the chicken has come home to roost. And we are literally being held hostage and prisoners in our homes, almost like the time that Paul was on house arrest when he was writing to the Philippians. Mm -hmm. What I come to tell you, my sisters and brothers, is that our health is being threatened. And the sad part about it is that it seems like whatever the government might do, whatever the world might do, it seems like there is no cure just yet. But I come to tell you that we may have a place in this historical theological moment, just like Paul. In other words, Paul's words uh, indicated that he was on his last days on earth and was convinced that this time the Emperor Nero was surely going to carry out his death sentence. But I have learned in the ministry, Paul never counted himself out. And always depended on the Lord. As a matter of fact, he was locked up, but he was not locked out of grace and mercy. Isn't it wonderful about grace and mercy? When, when we need grace and mercy, I want to tell somebody, it comes when you need it the most. And just like Paul, I'm speaking with an urgency and passion as though this may be the last time. There's death all around us and people who were once healthy are now literally fighting for their life. And I come to tell somebody uh, the question today is what do we do in the midst of this storm? If we look to this letter we can find grace, mercy and peace. Not just from anybody. As a matter of fact it's from God the Father. And not only God the Father, but also Jesus the Christ. And I come to tell somebody, you can have a better situation or a better person that's going to defend you during these hard times. That's right. It's giving you a double dose. God the Father, and then our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then if you throw in the Holy Spirit, we call that a triple threat. Oh, somebody ought to be happy about that. That even right now, that what's going to happen is that this whole thing that we're going through will be by and by. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So here it is. I'm looking at this letter and Paul identifies himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Paul was a passionate man of the gospel and promoted the gospel as an ambassador from God. And what that tells me about Brother Paul is that uh, we all have a role to play. And we need to realize that the time is now and not later. I don't know about you, but I am reluctant to really think that things are going to get better before they're going to get worse. 
But one of the things that I can tell you right now is that it's time for us to stir up the gift and not be shaken because of this virus. Appalachia, we have been studying the ten plagues of Egypt. So we know something about plagues. And now we are called to remember on the night of Exodus where the death angel visited the firstborn of Egypt and all that applied the blood to the doorpost. And has the death angel passed, it was the blood that was on the doorpost. Right. But I come to tell somebody, we don't have to do that today because the blood has already been applied by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a mighty God we serve because the blood still works. Not only still works, we ought to hold up our bloodstained banner so people can see that by Jesus lives. Not only does he live, but he lives inside of us. Someone sent my wife an acronym for COVID-19. And this acronym, it stands for Christ over viruses and infectious diseases. And if you read Joshua 19, you will see how powerful the word really is because Joshua 19 says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous and not to be frightened, amen, and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That means that if you're in your house, he's there. That means when you're walking on the street, he's there. That means that even if you have to go to your job, he's there. If you have to go back to school, he's there. But what I want to tell somebody, that you might need him in a time of distress. And when I was thinking about this title, it reminded me of the movie called James Bond Goldfinger. The words shaken and not stirred is uttered by Bond himself played by Sean Connery. It was used several times uh, thereafter with much anticipation to solidify the nerve of steel spy calling card. But to my surprise, the problem was that according to the mixologist uh, that you should never shake the martini. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. For the Christians, we don't know nothing about that, Amen. But the fact of the matter, the world knows that you should never shake the martini because it's only supposed to be stirred. But then when the producers and the writers, when they came and they were looking at something to do and to change up the script, the movie writers corrected the order in the movie You Only Live Twice in 1967 in which the drink was supposed to be offered stirred but not shaken. Oh, y'all don't see where I'm going. What I'm saying, my sisters and brothers, that God has a way of straightening things out. That's right. Even when man makes it wrong, God will make it right. Even when man tells the people that he does not have anyone to look for or after or in anyone that will give him the opportunity to know that he will be saved. I come to tell you, we got to stop listening to this news about this COVID-19. Because the reason why I say that is because, first of all, if you are a child of God, he gives you the wisdom of what to do. Just like he did the children of Israel when he told Moses to put the blood on the doorpost. What I'm saying is that we ought to follow directions. Because, first of all, Paul said that we ought to be able to make sure that we follow the law. And the law says that, first of all, we have to make sure we wash our hands all the time. The law says that we have to keep our distance to make sure that we don't transmit this deadly disease. Amen. The law says also that we have to make sure that when we're sick, we stay at home. But I come to tell somebody that that's just what they call common sense. But I come to tell you some of us don't have common sense because what I found out, common sense is not common. And the reason why I know that because when we passed by the mall on Sunday, the mall was full. And I said to myself, don't they know that there are 
putting themselves in jeopardy. And then it dawned on me that these people must know Jesus. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Because they decided they would go out and do what they wanted to do in the midst of the storm. But I come to tell you that first and foremost, when we look at this text, we have to understand that Paul writes to Timothy. And it tells us that we ought to be stirred and not shaken. I know that it looks bad when we're facing a virus that has no cure. But I come to offer that earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. We need to look to the word of God in the time of chaos. Let's look at the text. And when we look at the text, we find in verse 1 it tells us that we have to work to do in this day and age because we all have a role to play. Especially as Christians because we have to show the world our earthly assignment. That's what Paul did. Whenever Paul went somewhere, he showed everybody his earthly assignment. And his earthly assignment was to be able to go and tell somebody about Jesus Christ. And I come to tell somebody, I'm so glad that every day in my waking, I can go and just talk about our Lord and Savior, the Jesus Christ. Paul knew his assignment. And so the question today for us, do we know our assignment? Mm. But then when you look at verse 2, verse 2 says that we are chosen people of God. Because Paul reminds us that we are beloved and we have grace mercy and peace on our side isn't that some good news I thank God to know I have grace and mercy on my side but not just from anybody according to this word it comes from God the father but also from Christ Jesus but then when you look at this it also comes from our own forefathers and big mama Big Mama told us a long time ago that we are more than conquerors. Big Mama told us that he may not show up today, but he, he's an on-time God. Big Mama told us that Jesus is on the main line. And every time I think about his goodness, he has never let me down. Paul reminds Timothy, a man who was like us. Timothy was struggling in the ministry. And part of it was that it was because of his youth. He didn't understand that God had given him the position and appointed him to do his earthly duty. And sometimes we get real afraid to do God's work. But I come to tell somebody that we got to learn that first and foremost, that in order to do God's work, we got to be stirred and not shaken. Well, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. And every time I think about his goodness, it tells me that he's always there all the time. But the question today is, why are we not learning that in order to do God's work, we got to be saved? Every time I think about being saved, I think about what God has done for me. And Paul had to remind him that uh, Timothy, mother Lois, and his, his, I mean his grandmother Lois and his mother ta- Eunice taught him about God, that a God that cannot fail. And now it is right here in this text that how Eunice told Timothy how God had saved the children of Israel from destruction by providing an antidote from his wrath. Abilachi, I know you're at home and You might want to listen to this, but you remember Sunday school lesson when God was upset with the children of Israel and he sent fiery snakes and the snake did bite those who were disobedient. But when the people begged Moses to pray to God and then they repented, God heard their cry. And that's what we need to do. We need to beg for forgiveness. We need to repent from our sins. And if you don't know the Lord, you ought to understand one thing, that he, he cares about the one that is not saved. As a matter of fact, Jesus told a parable where he says he would leave the 99 
to go out and get the one. And the question today, are you that one? So when I look at this text, it tells me if we pray without ceasing. And if we call on the mighty name of Jesus and stand still and see the goodness of the Lord, he will heal the land. And if I had three witnesses, even though we had a skeleton crew, I can get three witnesses out of the ten to know that, first of all, something about his grace and mercy. As a matter of fact, his grace and mercy is always available for us despite all of our shortcomings, despite our disobedience, despite our blunders and mistakes. In other words, we have the Lord loving hand wrapped around us. What a mighty God we serve. So now, when I look at this text, it brings me to verse 4. We need to be reminded that if we pray for others and practice this daily for our brothers and sisters in this world, and that's what Paul was writing to Timothy about. He wanted him to understand that first and foremost, we ought to love one another. Uh We ought to pray for one another. We ought to check on one another, especially in times like this. So the question today, do you have a prayer list? Then our faith. Because when you look at verse 5, Paul realized Timothy's faith was pure. But he needed to warn him that despite Timothy's background of having a father that was not a Christian, what his grandmother and mother put inside of him was more enough to build a foundation of faith. As Christian, we must hold on to our faith. Mm. And in times like this, we cannot be shaken. So when I look at this letter, it was a message to me to be encouraged and to be bold in Christ so that I may lead God's people to salvation. My job as the new pastor is to protect the flock. Mm -hmm. And I do that with my own life, as Paul did when he wrote this last letter before his execution. We all need to be bold in Christ, not full of bluster, and use this word to lift up somebody, not to tear them down, not to have an in-your-face confrontation attitude but be bold in love and compassion for Christ's sake. And so, my sisters and brothers, this is something that we all need to do. We all need to be bold, especially in a time like this. That's why when you look at verse 6, Paul writes, For this reason, I remind you to stir up the gift. In the Greek translation, uh, the word means to fan into flames. And, 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 and what that tells me is that uh, when we fan the flames, it's like what Jeremiah says, fire shut yeah. up in my bones. And how do I know that? Because we must practice our faith and not our fears. Mm. That's why we must be stirred and not shaken. Yeah. Verse 8, and I'm almost done. It says, when we are shaken, we are afraid to give God the glory. When we are shaken, we are afraid that weapons do prosper. When we are shaken, we give into the wiles of the devil. When we are shaken, we become the last and not the first. When we are shaken, we don't hold on to God's unchanging hands. When we are shaken, the world dictates to us our fears and not our faith. My sisters and brothers, I believe that God is spoken to us and to let us know that we need to hold on to his unchanging hands. When we are shaken, we find fault in our faith. When we are shaken, we stop believing that Jesus can fix it. That's why when you look at the text, Paul says, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord in our present situation. When Paul writes to the Romans in 8.18, he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time 
are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What I'm saying is that there are some things that we have to do as saints. Amen. And the three things we need to do right now. Number one, we need to pray without ceasing. And what that means is that we need to pray early in the morning. We need to pray in the noonday. We need to pray in the evening. We need to pray when people call us for prayer. We need to pray when things are good and we need to pray when things are bad. But what we must do in this life, especially right now, we need to pray without ceasing. The Bible says Daniel prayed three times a day. It landed him in the lion's den. I don't know about you, but I haven't been to the zoo lately. But I do know that if I have to go to the lion's den, I'm going to be prayed up. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm saying. And I keep telling somebody, you got to pray until something happens. The second thing we need to do, we need to stir up our gifts, which is in Christ Jesus. As a matter of fact, I remember when I was in the army, they gave me a task. I had additional duty to be able to be qualified as a nuclear biological specialist. And then they told me that I had to do CBR training, chemical biological radiation training. And until now, I never knew why God had me to be trained. But today, I found out. Because he gave me that gift to make sure that I understood When something like this happens, don't you panic. Don't you be afraid. Because what I come to tell you, that I learned that as long as you protect yourself, you'll be all right. And I come to tell somebody out there on Facebook, social media, the only way that you can protect yourself is with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The third thing I'm going to do, and we can step aside here, is to let you know that you should not be shaken because of our trials and tribulations. And I come to tell you that nothing on this world, in, in this world, should shake you other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I remember when the Holy Spirit came unto me. I thought I was having a heart attack because it shook me all the way down to the ground. And because I had not been obedient to his call, he made sure that he got my attention. And I believe that this virus is to get our attention. I believe that God wants us to be able to understand that it's he that is sitting high and looking low. I believe that it's God that's telling us that we got to stop our evil ways. I believe that it's God that's telling us that a time has to change and it must be now. So my sisters and brothers, I want to just to make sure that I'm not scaring you because see, I found out when he called me He didn't call me to death, but he called me to life. And if there's anybody out there that want to know our Lord and Savior, it is given to you a life of salvation. In other other words, you have the right to the tree of life. In other words, you will never die and you'll never get old. In other words, you don't have to worry about a virus. You don't have to worry about crying. You don't have to worry about dying. You don't have to worry about paying your bills. Because what I found out that even today if we walk out of this place if you walk out of your house if you own your job you can leave this world today. But the question today are you prepared to leave this world the right way? And what is the right way? Well, I come to tell somebody the right way is Jesus. How do I know that? Well, because one Friday evening on the old rugged cross, it was our God, our Lord and Savior that went to Calvary 
And when he went to Calvary, hallelujah, he gave us what we needed for eternity. In other words, he came and then he gave us victory over death. And because he gave us victory over death, that means you shall not die but live. Is there anybody out there that realize that when you come and give your hand to Jesus in your heart, you would be able to find out that he will give you life and life more abundantly. But automatically, I want to tell you that that's not the end of the story. He did not only die for us, but he laid in a borrowed tomb. Just like Paul when Paul was in the dungeon. But this tomb, it had a stone over it. And one Sunday morning, the stone rolled over. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. One Sunday morning, Jesus came out. And I want to tell somebody that he lives. And because he lived, that means that we have salvation. But I'm not finished there. Because when he went to the right hand of the Father, the Bible tells us that he came back for 40 days he did eat with his disciples and so my sisters and brothers no matter where you at Jesus is on the main line and I thank God for him being on the main line because it tells me that we ought to be able to understand that whatever we need is already here and some of us are failing the test but I come to tell you that the test is an open book test and all you have to do is get your Bible out and start reading what thus saith the Lord. And I guarantee you'll understand what Jesus died for. But then you rejoice for when he got up. Oh, we ought to be glad about what God has done for us. And I'm so glad that what he's done for us. Because early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, he rose and he rose so that we may light. That we may have life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah to my Lord and Savior Jesus. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah because he died for my sins. Hallelujah because he saved the wretch like me. Hallelujah because he gave me life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah because he not only did it for me. He did it for you too. And all I'm asking you to do just to come check him out you don't have to find him he'll find you he's never lost but what I can tell you he came for the loss oh what a God we serve I'm so glad he came but before I go I want to tell you a story about what I witnessed one day one day I witnessed a miracle even today in our own standing my spiritual father sent me on assignment to the hospital. He told me to go pray for one of our members who had been in a coma for two months. And every day I would go to the hospital praying for that member. And I saw no sign, but what I realized that when I got out, I had my head hang down. And my head was hung down because I thought that it was all over. So I would come back and I would say, Pastor, it looks bad. And he would tell me, son, you go back tomorrow. And every time I would go back, I would walk out of the room thinking that it was all over. But then one day, one day I came in there and I saw her sitting up in a bed. And when I saw her, I just started glorifying my God. But then what she said, it blew my mind. She told me, she said, Ram, they told me I was dead. But I want to tell somebody that I'm not dead. I'm not counted out. But I come to tell you that it felt like I was sleeping. And when I woke up, the only thing I wanted to do, I just wanted to go to church. That's all I want to do. If I can just go to church. If I can just worship my God, if I can just praise my God, if I just can shout hallelujah, if I can just tell the world what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. 
I thank God for this message because it tells us that God didn't give us the spirit of fear. And in this time, we must hold on. And please hold on because even when it gets worse, your God can still do better. I come to learn that a long time ago. So, of course, right now, I want to offer somebody out there the hand to salvation. I want to prepare them to let them know that no matter what they did in this world, it doesn't matter if you was on drugs, it doesn't matter if you were on alcohol, it doesn't matter if you stole something, it doesn't matter if you didn't do well in life, you got an opportunity to come to Christ. Because what I can tell you is that no matter what you did, Christ will wash away your sins. He already paid the price. And all you have to do is just realize what he can do. The door of the church is open for those who do not know him. And no matter where you're at, if you're in front of your TV, in front of your iPhone, or wherever you're at, all you have to do is just confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he died and he was resurrected. And the Bible says that you shall be saved. What a mighty God we serve. Give God the praise. walk with him. He'll never let you down. I know I'm personal. You might be on a tedious journey. But don't you worry. done what God has called us to do and we thank God that there were always room in the kingdom of heaven and I just thank God for this opportunity just to be able to uh, ask someone to give Jesus a try and so we want to be able to extend not only the discipleship but also our fellowship and if you're ever in Bethlehem Georgia stop by and see us I guarantee you that you will have a good time. Not only have a good time, we praise the Lord here. And so I thank God that even though we have to limit ourselves this time, but believe me, when it's all said and done, we'll have better days. Amen. So let me give a quick housekeeping announcement. We will do this as long as it takes. Uh, Next week we will do the same thing. We promise that we will be in your homes, on your iPhone, on your iPad. We promise that we will do what God is calling us to do. And we are not giving up because, first of all, we know that we are stirred and not shaken. So now let us close out with our benediction. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. By the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest ruled and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. And let the church say, Amen. In us the spirit of fear, but the Lord has given us power. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Oh, no, no.